Hey, this is Jake in California again for part two of beer making apparatus. Getting my setup uh, finished so I can start making a batch of beer. I uh, had a few comments about the good old beer belly. You know, hey fatty, hey Santa Claus. Yeah, I've heard it all. And it's actually the t-shirt that makes it look worse. So I'm going to be working on the beer belly more. Got to get it bigger so I can grow out my beard and do Santa Claus next year. Just kidding. Actually, I'm going to be getting rid of it a little. Hey, honey. My wife just came in and said hi. Um, anyway, so yes, I've heard it all. Ha ha. Real funny. Beer belly. Ironic since I'm making beer. Anyway, this is part two. We're going to talk about uh, continuing on to make how the wort, the wort chiller. How to make the wort chiller. So as I talked last time, we had some of the, some of the ingredients for this. It includes a high temperature rubber hose. 20 feet of 3 8 inch copper coil and a miscellaneous bag of hardware. Now what I'm working off of is a set of plans that I got off the internet and I'd be happy to put the link on here. But this is basically how to make a counter flow chiller. And this is the direction we're using. And it's going to end up looking like this. But the first step to get all your parts together. There's a picture. I think this would be better if you just look on it online. But these are the directions I'm using. The link will be below this video. But step one is uh, sort of making my uh, making my cuts here. I have some stuff to make the cuts with. Some beer with dinner. First thing you have to do is measure, measure the hose. Haha, ha, measure the hose. Yes, we're gonna pull out the, gonna pull out the measuring stick and see how long it is. Ha ha ha! Very funny. I've heard those jokes too. And we're gonna cut it. That's something you only want to do once you figure out exactly what you need. Now, in this case, I was only able to buy 20 feet of copper coil. Very expensive out here. This was $25, don't tell my wife. This was a lot of money. So measure twice, cut once, as they say. Don't screw it up. So the first thing you're gonna do is get the rubber hose out of the packaging. And you're gonna save, if your hose came with these sort of wrapping coils, you're gonna save those, because those are gonna be used later. And because I was only able to get 20 feet of coil, and the hose comes in a 50 foot length, I'm actually gonna be doing two projects here. The first project is cutting this hose out that I need, and the second part of it's going to be making a 30 foot leftover hose. So what I've done here, is I've actually purchased repair kits for hoses, so that I can cut out what I need and then I can make myself a piece of shorter hose and not waste this hose because I'm telling you this hose was very expensive too this was about twenty seven dollars but yeah you'll see alright so the first thing you need to do is you need to cut off about ten inches of hose I'm going to go ahead and make it a foot because I like round numbers. One foot of hose. I'm just using some garden shears because it'll, it'll cut rubber hose. One foot of hose. And we're going to set that aside. Then what we're going to do is we're going to measure. Um, measure another foot. This is the easy part of this project. Believe it or not, it is very easy. One foot of hose. All right, so there's my two pieces of hose. And then I have 40 more feet of this rubber hose here. So what I'm gonna do is because my coil, because my coil is 20 feet, I gotta make this hose 20 feet. I'm just going to measure 
I'm gonna measure this out. And this is this is a pain in the butt. Believe it or not, this is not the hardest part of this project. Measuring a coiled hose that goes all over the place is nothing. Six feet of hose right there. So, it's always best to unwind this. For my buddies, they're probably watching this and laughing at me and saying, ha ha, look at messing with the hose. Isn't that funny? The pain in the butt is what it is. So, I do not pity you, my friends. This is definitely not a project for the faint of heart. And it can really be annoying. So what I find works best is measure out a known length. This is five feet. And then just back it over for another, another five feet. So that's ten feet. We're going to measure that out again. Measure that out again. All right, so there's there's 20 feet, 20 feet, approximately 20 feet. And we'll give it a little more. 20 feet. All right. So since we have our 20 feet of hose. This is actually a few feet shorter, not by much, but a few feet shorter than what they recommend. So that's 20 feet hose, that's all you need right there. So you're now left with a whole bunch of leftover hose. And the way you fix this is you take the you take the kit that you bought and you put your hose patching kit. Oh, hang on. Take your hose patching kit. Hose patching kits are real easy. Um, okay, you're right there. Take your hose patching kit. It's almost dinner time, so I'm gonna have to take a break from this. But take your hose patching kit. You put your hose clamp on the hose, and then you stick this this uh, adapter on here. And you push it up to the hose, and you just clamp it. Very easy, very simple. These are very high quality parts, you know, good good brass, good brass clamp with a good hose clamp. And you put it on properly, and this will last years and years and years. So here's what I've done with this one. Put it on tight, tighten it down. Very simple patching kit. Not much to it. Most people can do this without a problem. If you have any questions, you can ask your lawn and garden professional or just read the directions. Figure it out. Figure it out for yourself. Do the same thing with the other end. Take your hose, take the patching kit, and make sure you buy opposing ends. This is male and female male and female. This one is a uh, male. The other end is a uh, female. These uh, thread together so that's how you, you're able to know that you'll be able to use this on your regular hose so it just fits together like that. And you'll be able to use this in your lawn and garden so you can tell your wife, hey honey I'm not making beer I'm getting a new garden hose. Works here. Worked for me. <laughs> Same thing, put your patching kit, fits in the hose, very simply, you may have to use a bit of elbow grease, position it so that it's down a little bit, and the, the fun thing is you can also use this, when you're all done, you can use this as part of your wart chiller, so you, you can move, this particular hose will enable me to move 
my brewing kettle in the backyard 30 feet away from the, the hose bed so I can get fresh water even though I'm out in the grass where it's a little safe safe to work. All right, so I now have a perfectly serviceable 30 foot long garden hose that fits together very nicely and we can use it as the next part in our project. But I'll show that to you a bit later. So there's the hose, that's part two.